This is my fourth video in the series on local arithmetic um, or the chessboard abacus created by John Napier. Um, I've already introduced the board, we've added and subtracted, and we've done multiplication. So now I'm going to look at division. Um, there may be some errors because I'm really just creating this video for myself just after having learned this so that I don't forget how to do it. So the first division problem I'm going to do is 60 divided by 6. We know that the answer is going to come out to be 10, but let's see how that works. So the biggest challenge really in working with this is that you have to represent your numbers using the powers of 2. Um, we could think of that as binary. That's not how Napier would have thought of it. 64 is bigger than 60, so I start with 32. If I put a 16 with that, I'm up at 48. If I put an 8 with that, I have 56, plus 4 more is 60. So these numbers add up to 60. I want to do 60 divided by 6. There's my 60. I'm going to create the 6 over here. That's what I'm dividing by. And I will take those numbers down on the bottom, my dividend of 60, and I'm going to slide those up and to the right in order to create a rectangle so that I can read off my answer. So let's see how that works. Um, none of these markers are on the board. They're just indicators. They are off the board and they just let me know what my numbers are that I'm working with. So I'm going to bring the 32 into play and I'm going to slide it up and to the right until I hit the top row of my divisor. I bring the 16 into play. I also slide that diagonally. Now I could keep sliding, right? This has a value of 16 all the way through but I want to have something in this row because it needs to be 6 times something, and I need to have a, a rectangular shape in the center come out of this. Um, this is basically the area model of multiplication, but used backwards. So now let's bring the 8 into play, and let's slide that until it hits that top row. Let's bring the 4 into play. And let's slide that. And we have now created a rectangular shape. It's going to be 6 times something. I see the 6 on the right. And what I see on the bottom in terms of what columns are being used are 8 plus 2, which is 10. So 60 divided by 6 is 10. Now that was a pretty easy problem because there wasn't any regrouping that needed to be done. The next problem I'm going to do involves some regrouping, and I may end up making some errors here. So let's, let's do this thing and see how it works out. The problem is going to be 210 divided by 10. It's an easy one for us to do in our heads. 210 divided by 10 is 21. So again, the challenging part is to write out the 210. This is too big, but 128 will go into it plus 64, plus 16, plus 2. So 210, let's see, 16 and 64, that's 80. And 128 plus 2 is 130. 130 plus 80 is 210. And I want to divide that by 10. So here's my 10 over here. And I'm going to use that same process that I used for the earlier problem. Um, but there may be some regrouping that needs to happen. Let's see how this goes. So I bring the 128 onto the board and I slide it diagonally up to the right until it ends up in that top row that I'm concerned about. So I now want to get something in this row, but that's underneath this coin. So I want something coming up from here. If I bring the 64 into play, and I slide that along the diagonal, it's not going to end up in the correct row. So what I need to do is some regrouping. That single 64 is equivalent to 32s. I can bring a 32 into play, slide that diagonally into the right, and that's going to be in the correct row. And it's going to be underneath the other one. We want the rows and columns to line up. We basically want a rectangular shape. So, in order to continue this, let's see, I'm going to bring this 32 into play as well, and I'm going to slide that up until it hits this row here. So the next place that I need to get a coin 
is right here. I need something in this row, and since I already have something in that column, I need something else in this column. So let's bring the 16 into play. As I slide it, well, that's the correct row, but not the correct column. This is the correct column, but not the correct row. So I'm going to need to regroup that 16. Instead of 116, I'm going to have two 8s. Bring an 8 into play, slide it diagonally, and that works out just fine. So can I also take this 8 and this, this remaining 8 and slide it and get into that column? Well, let's see. So I bring it into play, move it up along the diagonal, and it ends up in the right place. I move the 2 onto the board, slide it diagonally, and I do have that rectangular shape where I've got coins in matching columns and matching rows. So I started out with 210. I divided it by 10, and the answer better be 21. So let's see. We have 16 plus 4 is 20, plus 1 more is 21. So that worked out. Um, so what would it look like if we have a remainder? Um, this problem is another rather challenging one. I may make a mistake, but I'm just going to let the video keep rolling. So let's see what happens here. The problem I'm going to do is 250 divided by 13. 250 divided by 13. So 250, well that's too big, so we're going to start with 128. It's 128 plus 64 more, plus 32, plus 16, plus 8, plus 2. If you add up all of those numbers, you will get 250. And we want to divide that by 13, which is 8 and 4 gives us 12, plus 1 more gives us 13. And so we're going we're gonna to work with this in the same way. I bring the 128 into play, and I slide it diagonally until I hit that row that I want. And so I need something here and I need something there because I'm going to have coins in this column, but they need to match this row because I'm dividing by 13 and I need to have that number represented in each column that I use. So let's bring the 64 into play and let's slide that up diagonally. Yep, that's working so far. So now I need to get something right here. It's going to be in this column and I need it in this row. Well, um, I can go ahead and take the 16 and just bring it into play, and that gets us what we need. It's probably not the only way to do it. I probably could have done some regrouping with this 32. Um, one of the things I'm not sure about yet is if there's a, a best or fastest way to do this, or a certain order that you should do it in, but it's, it's pretty flexible. So let's see what I can do with this 32. I'm going to bring that onto the board, and I'm going to slide that up until I get to this row here. Um, let's see what happens with the 8. If I start working with that, yeah, I'm in trouble because um, all I can do now is bring this 2 in. I, I don't have something here, which is what I really need. So I think I missed out on a, on a regrouping opportunity. So let's bring these back to where they came from. Uh, let's see. And I'm actually going to do some regrouping here. I'm going to take this 32 and make two 16s of it. Bring the 16 into play. Slide that up. Um, the other 16, if I slide that up, I, you know, I don't want it in this row, this row, this row. I've already got it here. I don't want it in this row. I think I'm going to need to regroup with that 16 as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now I have three in the eights column. There was one already there, and then a 16 got regrouped to be an eight. So I've got three coins here. I'm going to bring one into play and slide it diagonally up. It's properly placed because it's matching a column in use and it's matching a row that's in use as well. Um, let's bring the other eight into play. Well, actually, let, let's be concerned about one column at a time. So again, I'm still thinking this through and still trying to figure it out. 
I can bring this directly into play and that gives me the columns that I need. So the only column that I could still potentially use is this one over here. So what happens if I take this eight and move it up the diagonal? Yeah, that's gonna end up in the right place. But now I don't wanna use an eight again because that's gonna end up in the same place as before. So I'm going to regroup to the four. Two fours are equal to an eight. Bring a four into play, move it up the diagonal. And now I know I need to get one here because this has to make a rectangular shape in the same side. And yeah, on the inside, it needs to make a rectangular shape. If I bring the four in, that's going to be in the correct column, but not in the correct row. Yeah, and I think I did something funny there. I said I had a four. So let's go ahead and take that four and regroup it as a two, which I'm not going to be able to use either. So take this two and regroup it as two ones move that onto the board, and what we find is that 250 divided by 13 gives us this nice rectangle here, but there's, there's nothing that I can do with these two coins. If I bring them in and try to move them diagonally, they're either going to end up in the wrong row, or they're going to end up off of the board. So this is actually a remainder. So 250 divided by 13 is 16 plus 2 plus 1, which is 19, and these coins represent a remainder. 2 plus 1 is 3. So 250 divided by 13 is 19 with a remainder of 3.